Hi folks, I've got the absolute pleasure of being joined by Shad from the YouTube channel Shadiversity. If you don't know him, uh, go look him up because he does great work. He talks about uh, castles and medieval war a lot, which is definitely up my alley. Uh, but he also is concerned about, well, the modern world and the state of families, It's which is something we're going to talk about because you're a very successful father yourself, aren't you? Thank you, father of five. That's amazing, I'm at four. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, and I'm, I'm, my wife's like, yeah, that's enough, we're not yeah. having any more. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I'm fine with that. <laughs> that was kind of our intent. But interestingly enough, my wife and I, uh, going into parenting, we actually were like, we wanted as many as we could manage. Like, like mm -hmm. we would have been happy 12 and more, right? Like, like we genuinely love kids more than you know, I can oh, yeah. really express. Uh, but we also understood that we have to take it one at a time see what we can manage yeah. <laughs> and uh and uh we could see that okay i think we have hit, hit hit our limit at five even though there is that side of us that gosh we would love more but yeah. um five five is brilliant my, my wife every single day she says something like i'd like another baby and it's like okay <laughs> we have a current baby at the moment she's six months old mm -hmm. and you know we've got more than enough to handle four mm -hmm. is enough so mm -hmm. You know, no, no more for us, thank God. Um, but you mind if I jump on something that you, yeah. that you mentioned? So, yeah, I started doing YouTube swords and everything, um, mm. uh, castles, history, knighthood, all, all, all that stuff. I've always been deeply, deeply interested in cultural events, as well as uh, the way the culture manifests. More, more so probably the way the culture manifests in terms of media, um, because mm. that had such a astounding impact on me growing up. The heroes that I was engrossed in, mm -hmm. the stories, the mythology, and it literally made me a better person. Mm. I grew up as a kid wanting to be a superhero. Mm. And that was an intent. That was an active quest of mine as a kid. And I would I remember I having conversation with my other friends like how can we get superpowers? Let's let's really discuss this. And uh and I went through all like the list like I don't find... think gamma radiation No, way, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to risk getting bit by a spider because and i don't think it's <laughs> not in australia be, anyway yeah well that, <laughs> yeah right uh and uh, genie bottles were really too hard to mm. find i didn't know it but i came up with this brilliant plan i i it was a, there was epiphany as a kid mm. it's like oh my gosh i could ask santa for magical powers he has magical powers yeah, he point. could grant them to me yeah. and so literally i did that i i i actually asked santa claus for magical powers and um I eventually got a, uh, a note back from Santa one Christmas uh, stating that he couldn't give them to me yet, but he would give them to me in the future. And oh. I was like, yes! Uh, but it was because of the impact of what I was engrossed in. And mm. there were some great, great just cartoons and role models that I really identified with. Superman was a big one, Spider-Man, and uh, of course Robin Hood mm. and all those things. Um, and so that's actually what was my goal in life, to be a writer, to try and make stories that could have these same kind of positive things. And uh, and I'm my quest was to be an author before a YouTuber. Right. Um, YouTubing, I started as, uh, uh, well, I want to correct misinformation. It was just a, a, a hobby, something I enjoyed, but also potentially build a fan base to watch my writing career. But uh, it certainly became its own thing, and I love doing what I do. Yet there is that side of me that still is so interested in the stories and everything, and that's where my second channel has mm -hmm. really risen, Night's Watch. And that's where I get to, uh, well, it's mainly pop culture criticism, because, oh, oh there is a lot to criticise these days, Carl. No, no shortage of subject matter. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and so that's where I get my outlet to talk about that. And then, of course, I do have the media I'm able to produce. So I have my novel that I was able to launch and doing a graphic novel now. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to just dive into that and, and push it as far as far as I can. Um, and so sorry for the sidetraction no, uh, uh, about that. But um, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I do get to address the things. And, and more recently, which is kind of rounding this back into the topic, I did a video addressing the plight of young men. I saw. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, because this is something that's been on my mind for a long time and my heart breaks. Yeah, mine too. And it, it's interesting you bring up the media, right? Because I have been thinking in the past few years just about the media that I consumed when I was young. And I went back and watched a bunch of it, like just literally kids' cartoons from like the mm. 80s and 90s, right? And one of the things I just found remarkable is how unperverse it was. Right, mm. how actually wholesome? Yeah. Like people find like things like He Man and Transformers comical now, but actually, if you go back and watch them, they're good messages. Really good. The heroes mm. always do the right thing. 
Yes, and He Man often ended with a positive message, uh, an actual end. like moral yeah. lecture. Yes, a conservative yeah. often moral mm -hmm. lecture. I mean, there was one episode of He Man where the 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 characters are lecturing you about the Magna Carta <laughs> and the importance <laughs> of the Magna Carta, yeah. and I was just like, yes. Mm. You know, if if I if I were my dad, I'd want my son watching that, and I, as my, my mother, father to my sons, I would be more than happy for yes. them to watch that. Yeah, I just you know? just on He Man's like like there was an episode where He Man lost his sword and he mm. had to confront the bad guy without his powers, right. and the message at the end was, you know, I didn't have my sword, but I used my brain this time, and there yeah. are other kind of things that you can develop, mm. um, and and there are layers to that message oh, that yeah. can resonate, and be really positive, and it's in, <laughs> and He Man is hilariously goofy <laughs> sure <laughs> like and it, sure but but as a kid i just i ate that up he but, man was a but it's sincere yes that's the difference because mm -hmm. i watch the cartoons that my kids have to watch now because that's all that's on in netflix or whatever mm -hmm. and they are made by cynical millennials we're yeah. trying to introduce irony into them mm -hmm. it's like no look an eight-year-old is not ironic they don't mm -hmm. understand irony and actually it's probably perverse mm -hmm. to try and make them ironic this is not good for them actually a diet of sincerity is what is genuinely good for them mm -hmm. you know you should be reinforcing sincere and decent messaging mm -hmm. rather than making gross jokes that are aimed at adults and mm -hmm. things like that it's just yeah. not appropriate at all and i really despise it actually mm -hmm. I've, I've really i mean uh, on a visceral level i actually despise the thing some of the things i catch my son watching but they're just totally normal kids cartoons for this era mm -hmm. i just can't take it man yeah and uh, the people making the cartoons they're aware that it does have influence. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's oh, why yeah. they do it. Mm -hmm. They're exactly. totally aware. Well, they've said that. that they've yeah. admit they've just been bold-faced and just admitted it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know? Because they're, they're, they're promoting social messages. They, they, and, and, okay, well, let's talk about social messages. Because, actually, like, if you go back and look, just look at any example. Like, there's no, there's no uh, question of who the hero and the villain is in the story. Right. Mm. In every in every single one, in like Thundercats, Transformers, He-Man, you know, G.I. Joe, whatever yes. it is, right? Mm -hmm. all, all the men take responsibility. Mm -hmm. right? They are the ones taking responsibility. They are just stereotypically masculine. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they're, they're heroic. They do the right thing in all circumstances, even when that's the difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then finally, they solve their problems with violence, which, and I, I, I know it's not a popular thing. It's not a popular thing, but I think that really is the core of what being a man is. Mm -hmm. The last resort is always the fight, and that's the core of every superhero movie. It, it mm -hmm. always comes to a physical confrontation in which the hero has to use his physical virtues mm -hmm. to overcome the villain. That speaks to something quite, I think, deeper in... Um the subconscious. I think mm. I think people understand this on a subconscious level because it plays out in so many levels. Where if there is any conflict, mm. and every when every other um, option to resolve the conflict fails, mm. the last resort that it always falls to is violence. Yeah. To, to, like if it's a, a conflict that must be, it's the final arbitration. Exactly. It, 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 that's exactly that's a good way to put it, and people understand that. Yeah. And uh, when it falls to that, right? Uh, who are the people who, who, who out of the uh, groups of society, who, who are the people that usually ha have the task of taking that up? And Computer resolve? programmers, <laughs> HR uh, managers. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's the men, men that you want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The people of last resort. And this is why it's actually a virtue for men to cultivate the ability to be violent. Mm. That's, and that needs to be paired uh, as strongly with the ability to control it and understand its use and respect yes. it. And this is Jordan Peterson's point. Well, yeah, but this is also something I've understood just from watching cartoons. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, when I heard stuff like Jordan Peterson say stuff like that, to me it's like, that's true. Yeah. I've known it my whole life. Yeah. Isn't it a shame that it's so foreign for people to hear now. Yeah, it's it, Jordan mm. Peterson was doing something very novel when he articulated it. Because mm -hmm. I mean, every every young man knows that this is true because yeah. it's part of your life. Yes. You know, you'll get into fights, you'll have to deal with these things, mm -hmm. but to have it actually spoken of as a virtue in the modern world is just not something that happens. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, you know, I, I don't want to be the <laughs> man who breaks it to everyone, but we live in a very feminine society at the moment, which mm -hmm. I don't think is good for young men. Mm -hmm. At all, and one of one of the major criticisms of like you know eighties and nineties cartoons was oh well it was capitalist, it was <laughs> cynical capitalism. I was and, and and I've got a great great rejoinder to this. Like, yeah, it is right. 
It's entirely about, like, the people doing it, what was on the front of their minds was, we want to sell you products. That's great. So what did they do? They, they just took the traditional heroic archetypes of Western legends mm -hmm. and transposed them onto a consumable product and then mm -hmm. fed that to, to young people. It's like, great. No, no, that's great. That's unthinking traditionalism. Mm -hmm. They yes. didn't. They didn't think. Oh, we need to reinvent the wheel. We're not. We're not. We don't have a critical consciousness. We're mm -hmm. just going to reinforce the goodness of our own civilization mm -hmm. back to future generations. Mm -hmm. Like, sorry, capitalism doesn't. You know, you can mm -hmm. say, well, it's it's soulless. Yeah, maybe, but it's also doing exactly what we want. But it also ends up being more successful mm -hmm. because. It people respond and resonate to universal truths mm. uh, as, and even subconscious truths. Like, like we talked about, there's a subconscious understanding of this mm. about the need and capacity to have violence but controlled and for men to be out to uh, promote these things and everything. And it resonates with guys. Mm. Guys will enjoy this stuff because when they see the hero stand up for himself, fight bad guys and everything like there's this feeling and most guys are like, I'd love to be like that. Oh, yeah. You know, it's the whole reason why we have uh, the the action hero uh, um, masculine fantasy archetype, right? Oh, yeah. God, guys love that stuff because that's who they want to be like. They want to be the mm. type of person that would be able to protect and provide and it resonates deeply. And interestingly enough, when you do have media that um, has those themes in it, they generally do better. Oh. Um, and we're see, and it's so interesting because so much, so many TV shows, right, mm. that uh, are being made. I, so many examples. I'm, re I'm reviewing Wheel of Time recently, right? Oh, yeah. And there's a running trend, and it's just frustrating the heck out of me. Where the villains in the original book um, are really evil, but in the TV show adaptation, there's this one villain that they made very sympathetic. Oh, you need to understand a, why she's a villain. There's a gray zone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, it's very then, morally nuanced. And then yeah. all the heroes, yeah. they have to be morally ambiguous and do really questionable things, and I can't freaking stand it. George R.R. Martin has got so much to answer ah, for. But in Wheel of Time, it was, it had, this is why Wheel of Time was so popular, the mm. book series that has these classic heroes that are good-hearted people to the core and really bad villains, but in the adaptation, the modern thing, yeah. it's, it's skewing it. And so there are multiple things like this, like mm. um, modern day Marvel, where the heroes suddenly becoming ambiguous and yeah. dark and edgy yeah. and all the stuff. When it started out, Captain America, look at the first film. He is a good-hearted Boy Scout, and people well, that's love what Captain that. America is. Yes, and there's a, a recent show just at a uh, uh, shockingly from Netflix, right? Oh yeah. And uh, <laughs> but the shocking thing about it, it has those simple things in it. What's this show? It's One Piece. I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's a it's a manga, and a, so right, it was a manga right, and right, anime. Right. Right live action adaptation and yeah. I've watched all episodes except the last one and people are loving it and uh, I want to quote to you a line in it Go and on. I think you might flip out. So there are these um, uh, uh, children and they're mm -hmm. learning to be swords people, swords, you know, swordsmen and swordswomen and the girl is constantly beating the boy and the boy's getting really frustrated and everything like that and he kind of flips it and the girl basically says, what, and I'm paraphrasing but I'll get to a, a more direct quote, she says, you know this isn't going to last, you're going to grow up and you're going to become stronger than me. You'll have longer arms and everything like that. Mm. And I'm not going to have a chance. Then she says, girls can beat boys, but no woman can beat a man. Ooh. That's in this show. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's heretical <laughs> in I, I, the one there. It, yep. But in the context of physical conflict... Is it wrong? Is it wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was in that show, yeah. right? And so this show has traditional themes in it and people are loving it mm. because it just inherently resonates. And then it, you wonder why it becomes successful because yeah. both, and it goes into the whole damsel in, dis in distress trope and everything. People try and say that that is demeaning to women. Well, actually, when women are in trouble, they really like to get rescued, oddly <laughs> enough. Shock horror. Yeah. And... Better than being just rescued, being rescued by a handsome prince. I mean, I, 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 I'm aware that this is something that a lot of women like. You yes. know, I, I'm putting in mind of this Reddit post that I read years ago that for some reason has always stayed in my mind because it makes me wonder how much of an impact the, uh, the, the warrior woman in Hollywood has had an impact on young women mm -hmm. because this, this woman had just, you know, this young woman you know, in her 20s and posted how she was play fighting with her boyfriend, right? And she, her boyfriend apparently always lets her win. <laughs> and she was like, no, 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 come on, I really want to fight. And he just grabs her and just, and he's got her in a lock. And yeah. she was just like, I couldn't do anything. I, re I realized he was just so much stronger than me. Mm. Is this normal? And, 
Yes. Yes. Yeah, it is. That, like, yeah. <laughs> when, after I married my wife, right, um, there were just some clear kind of moments when uh, my strength was able to be compared to her, where she tries yeah. to do something and asked me to do it instead. Yeah. And uh, I've been shocked, like shocked yeah. multiple times at the vast strength difference between myself and my wife. And my wife is very representative, just the average woman, especially yeah. of her height. Well, and I'm, I don't consider myself a particularly strong guy. But as, a, as a mother as well. of five, she's probably very practical, gets yes. a lot of stuff done, you know, mm. very aware of her own agency, mm -hmm. you know, and you're, you're just a fairly regular dude. Exactly. Like me, and, you know. And, and when you compare the yep. standard strength yep. that a guy has compared to the standard strength that mm -hmm. a woman has, the difference is shocking. Yeah. Shocking. There, there, there's an incident of, uh, like, I, I always remember, me, before me and my wife were married, uh, we were, you know, just kind of playing around, having a fight, you know, and she had grabbed my finger and she was trying to pull it back, but I was actually able, with my little finger, <laughs> to resist, and she was like, how are you doing this? I'm like, I don't know, you know, like, and I'm like, I'm not particularly strong, but she, and, and I was just, it was just at that point, I was like, oh my God, yeah. you know, the, like, so the, the physical difference between men and women is just night and day and mm -hmm. it's it's not something that men are want to you know boast about or anything like that but it's just real mm -hmm. and it has an impact on our lives to watch the full video please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com <laughs>